Welcome knitters. Welcome back to Sticks Plus Twine. My name is Eric. It's great to see you again. Uh, today is the... what is today? Today is the 6th of November and as promised today we have the prizes for the last knit along that we did which was the fall finish along. So I drew for those. We'll talk about those a little bit later in the podcast. Um, I don't want to call it a podcast anymore because it's not really a podcast. I hate to say it. Everyone's been wrong this whole time. This is not a podcast. This is a YouTube channel, which is different than a podcast. Just saying. Anyway, uh, it's shorthand. I get it. Whatever. Um, what else are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about the new knit along that just started on November 1st that I am hosting. Uh, we have a couple of prizes that I'm going to share as well. And uh, what else are we going to talk about? I have some notes, but I've totally forgotten what I was going to talk about. Uh, I have a half finished object, which is a new sock. Uh, my first time doing a DK sock and I'm kind of in love with it. I'm finally on the bandwagon, I get it, I understand. DK socks are all the rage, I'm down for it. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about my, uh, my own project for the Knit Along. Uh, we have an organized knitting segment today that I've recorded previously that is about how I set up a project bag and the things that I think they're important to include in it, especially for a larger project. Um, so that'll be kind of fun. So um, that's enough about all of that. Let's get started. So the Sticks Plus Twine Cables and Cardies Knit Along uh, started November 1st, five, six days ago. And so just a recap, just a reminder, this is a knitted garment. Um, I'm thinking pants would qualify, but if you want to do cabled pants, go for it. Uh, otherwise, it's meant to be sort of a pullover, a sweater, or a cardigan. That includes cables. A cardigan, as far as I'm concerned, is just as good as a pullover. So it's cables and cardies. Um, I've had some people ask about like accessories. No, accessories are not eligible for prizes. Uh, this particular knit along is going to be conducted on Ravelry. So if you do a search on Ravelry for sticks plus twine, and then you will find that on the discussion board there is a chatter thread and there is a finished object thread. Multiple entries are permitted, uh, but it has to be a finished object. Works in progress are permitted as long as they are not, you know, three rows away from being finished. Like, let's be reasonable, we're all adults in the room, hopefully. Um, not to say that teenagers can't participate, they can, or kids, but you know what I mean. It's a, it's a figure of speech, figure of speech. Um, what else do we need to talk about? Um, it goes from November 1st until February 28th. We do have some prizes that I'm happy to announce. The first is the pattern called the Popcorn Garland Cowl that was provided by Gemma, who is the Midnight Diary. Thank you so much for the pattern donation, that's wonderful. We also now have our first yarn prize, which is a duet provided by um, Christina of Chelsea Lux Yarns. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. And it is in the Driftwood colorway, so that's happening. Um, I would love to know what you would like to hear for, uh, or hear for. I'd like to know what you would like as a prize. What are those things that you think would be interesting? Um, you know, the reality is yarn and patterns are kind of expected. So what else would you like to see? Leave a comment below and let me know. Um, and we'll see what we can do. You know, I'm open to suggestions. This is, uh, I'm hoping to be a bit of a community, right? There's a lot of people that watch that have been around for a long time, watch this channel for a long time. And I'd love to hear what your opinions are, what you'd like to see. So you know, you know what to do. Leave a comment below. That's where we're starting. Let me talk about my patterns that I'm planning on making. I am planning on hopefully making three. Uh, the first one is going to be the Longfellow Cardigan by Michelle Wong. It is a gorgeous fingering weight cardigan. It is made uh, in my particular instance. I will show you. I am making it in this uh, amaranth colorway. This is the yarn that I had originally frogged from uh, my Weekender Light. It is, and you'll see this pop up again when we talk about organized knitting, so you'll see it a bit more up close. But this um, loft is gorgeous, I love it. I did swatch for it, I did not get gauge, and with the recommended needles. 
but I'm not mad about it. Here's the thing. I am actually, the size that I would like to make is between two sizes. And the little bit of extra sort of stitch count that I'm getting in it um, will probably give me the ease that I'm looking for in the finished garment. So I'm fine with making it one size smaller than I thought I was going to actually require. So if that makes any sense to y'all, if you're a long-time sweater knitter, you'll know what I mean. Um, basically, it just means I'm going to have a little bit of extra fabric um, for the four inches that I'm supposed to have. I think it's 23 stitches for four inches um, or 10 centimeters. And um, mine's a little bit bigger. I'm fine with it. It will give me what I'm looking for. I'm pretty confident about that. Um, that said, I... I started the pocket linings because that's the first thing you do and I assumed I was going to have to make the bigger size and now I've changed my mind. First pocket lining was done, I'm going to rip it all out and do it again because it's going to be, it's a little bit too big for what I need and I want to do it right. I want to do this specifically right. Um, so that's the Longfellow, that's the first one. I'm just going to put that back. The second one I'm going to make is the Ballon Cardigan, uh, which is a pattern for Brooklyn Tweed that was designed by Emily Green. I've talked about this pattern in the past. It is a open cardigan that has bubbles and cables and all kinds of things going on with it. I love the pattern. It's going to be one of these ones that I'm just going to enjoy making so much. And I think I'm going to love it even more once it's made. So I'm going to have a pretty much a base stockinette cardigan. I'm going to have a very complex cardigan with bubbles and cables and all sorts of things. Um, that one will probably be my second one. I may cast on both at the same time, just because. And then my third project, which is... Okay, so time for true confessions. I had said in my last episode... I was going to go on a road trip, I was going to have a co-pilot, it was going to be fun. Uh, turns out the yarn that I was going to go pick up at a particular new yarn shop did not get the color that I wanted. So I postponed that plan. Um, so let's talk about it. I am going to make the seven pullover, um, which I just... Uh, it's a pattern that we've talked about before. It was based on the sweater that Chris Evans' character wears in Knives Out that the designer Megan Babin from Hudson and West created and launched as part of their fall twenty fall winter twenty twenty one collection, and I actually won a copy of the pattern, and I went to go and I ordered the yarn. I ordered the yarn from the only Canadian distributor of that particular yarn because shipping is extremely expensive for this particular stuff. They had one of two colors that I was considering, and I decided on the one color that uh, is a little backordered. So I haven't gone to pick it up yet. I promise you when I go to get it, I will take you for along for the ride. It's a, It will be a new experience for me for this particular yarn shop. I've never been there. I'm looking forward to it, though. So that's, um, that's upcoming. Rambling long way to say I am going to do three sweaters, fingers crossed, for this particular knit-along. Uh, but those are my choices. I would love to hear what your choices are. I know in the Ravelry group we've already started talking about what some of those are. I've been starting to collect people's suggestions as well in a pattern bundle that's also part of the group on Ravelry. So if you're interested in participating but don't really know what to make, then there's a resource for you there that you can take a look and see what some of the options are um, that other people have put together and a few just of my favorite patterns. So. That is the Cables and Cardi's Knit Along. It's kicked off. We're off to the races. A lot of people are already starting, uh, but you've got time. You've got four months. Uh, Christmas collections are coming out shortly, so you know you might be a bit delayed on that. Um, and we'll see how we do, right? Like I, I feel like if I can get two of the three done in the time frame, I will be more than happy. So that's our conversation around the Knit Along. Now we're going to just hear from our sponsor for a moment. We're going to, you know, pay for that sweater's quantity of yarn, and we'll be right back. Skillshare is the sponsor of today's episode. 
Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. For me, I feel like crochet is something I want to explore. There's classes on knitting, specifically continental knitting that I'm interested in looking at so I can improve my skills there. I love planning and creating planners and working in digital media, video editing, all of these elements that will help increase both my creativity but also my own skill set. I'm currently taking a class called YouTube Success, Script, Shoot and Edit with Marquez Brownlee, one of YouTube's most prolific and popular tech YouTubers. Whether you're a dabbler or a pro, a hobbyist or a master, you're creative. Discover what you can make with classes at every skill level. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning that there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. Skillshare's entire catalog of classes now offers subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and Dutch. Skillshare offers membership with meaning, with so much to explore, real projects to create, and the support of fellow creatives. Skillshare empowers you to explore real growth. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click on the link below will receive a free one-month trial to Skillshare so that you can start exploring your creativity today. All right, knitters, let's talk about some of the works in progress that we have. Um, I've talked about my Ott sweater ad nauseum for several episodes. I have not yet finished it. I literally put it on hold for the time being. Um, because I got obsessed with DK socks. <laughs> so uh, I've also been extraordinarily busy the last week or so, so I haven't really had a chance to really knit on it. But I want to show you the finished sock that I have made. Ooh, you know what? I'll be back in one sec. I'm going to put it on a blocker because you deserve a blocker. Y'all, it has been a while since I have used a sock blocker, and it's kind of old school and I kind of love it. Anyway, um... Ta-da! I finished the first one of my first DK sock ever, and I've done worsted sock before, but I've never done DK, and I think it might be my new favorite. It fits really, really well. This is the Crazy Sock Lady, Crazy Sock Lady, Crazy Sock Lady DK Vanilla Sock Pattern. Um, I love it. This yarn is... Uh, yarn that Sandy by the Lakeside, one of my wonderful friends, gifted me for my birthday that we decided we were actually going to do a matching pair, so she started hers as well. Um, we knit this, I think, it was Halloween when we started these. We were going to do it for Thanksgiving, Canadian Thanksgiving, but uh, Halloween it was. This is the Hawaiian shirt colorway from Woolens and Nosh in her um, DK sock uh, yarn. And I, this is the 48 stitch count for, it's a free pattern on Ravelry as well. Um, but for me, I wasn't sure because I, I, I've never done DK socks, so I wasn't sure what size to make for me. So I measured my foot and I kind of went with it, just hoping for the best, and it actually fits really well. It has been a long time since I have done a heel flap and gusset construction. I normally do now the shadow wrap heel from my wonderful friend Denise. Um, who's really made that sort of the new, for me, standard sock uh, heel turn, which I just love it. Uh, it's very similar to, it's a short row heel, but I, it just makes it so much simpler. I don't know why that works, but it does. Anyway, I haven't done one of these in a while. I thought I would do it for something different, and um, I love how it fits. It fits really, really well. The colors are amazing. Um, I'm not going to have a matched set of these. Uh, I split the skein into two. I will have fraternal twins, not identical twins on these, and I am more than okay with that. Um, I kind of like when they don't match exactly. It's like something new to look at your feet. I'm stretching my feet out here, you can't see. And I haven't had a pedicure in a while and you, you don't want to see my feet. But um, it's kind of cute when you see like, oh, they're, they're kind of matching and yet not, but for some uh, Definitely. I love identically matching socks sometimes, but these are kind of cute too. Anyway, um, for anybody who's going to ask, these are the Twig and Horn sock blockers. I love them. They're, they're awesome. I don't use them a lot, but because um, usually most of my socks, I just honestly, they're super wash socks. 
I chuck them in the washing machine and I chuck them in the dryer and they come out perfectly fine. Your mileage may vary, but mine, totally fine. So that is Vanilla DK Socks, my new favorite. I think I'm going to have to make more of these. So that has taken precedence over everything else. I, I don't know what to tell you. You know, I, I'm looking at another sleeve. I've looked at other stuff. Like, I have other projects, but the finish along is finished, and I want to cast everything on. So I'm making my own joy. What can I say? Anyway, that's it for works in progress to share. Let's talk about some organized knitting, shall we? Hello, my knitters. So today's organized knitting segment is going to be all about setting up for a new project. Um, the things that I put into a project bag to make sure that I am prepared and ready to go. So let's get started. So the first thing you're going to need is a project bag. Um, this is the Porter Bin from Fringe Supply Co. It's really good for projects I know will not be coming on the road with me that I won't be taking really other than from room to room. So let's pop that open. So it's nice and sturdy, lots of roomy, great for a sweater project. So all the things that I'm gonna show you will fit in this bag perfectly. So let's get started. Uh, first thing you will need is a notebook. Yes, uh, just a plain simple notebook. This is one that Brooklyn Tweed had given away with some of their um, holiday collection orders a couple of years ago. I had quite a few of those as presents given to me, so I have a couple of these notebooks left. That goes in the handy dandy little notebook slot. Next, you'll need something to write with. I like to use these Micron pens just because they're, they're nice, they're archival ink, they don't bleed through. So that goes in next. Then a pair of scissors. Yep, just a little ordinary pair of scissors. These are actually um, wonderful scissors that my friend Hoi Locatelli gave me. So I love those. Those go right in there as well. Your darning needles. You may not need them till the end of the project, but we want to make sure that we have them available to us. You just never know. Sometimes you need to, you know, tack something down or you want to put something on waste yarn. That's really helpful. That goes in there. Next is a tape measure. Yep, we all know the drama of the tape measure. They disappear on you constantly, I know, but that's where that goes. That pops in that pocket. I like to add a progress keeper. This is just a cute little Mickey Mouse one I got on a trip to Disney World, and it kind of goes sort of with the yarn, so I thought it would be cute. That goes there. Next, hand cream. Yeah, especially as we're knitting into winter, it is kind of vital to make sure we take care of our hands. And uh, this one is just like a nice, relatively unscented one. Um, so it's not going to transfer so much onto the yarn. If you are sensitive to fragrances, you may want to find something unfragranced, but definitely having hand cream is key. That pops in there as well. One of the most critical things that you can add to a project bag, especially for a larger project, is a fix a stitch. This happens to be from Twig and Horn. Um, I'm not sure if this is actually bone or not, but it is part of their bone collection. So that is another thing that I think is actually just absolutely critical. I tend to put this in with the darning needles, just so I know what it's there. You can also add a crochet hook. You know, that's pretty easy as well. So that's it for notions. What else do we need? Well, we need our knitting needles. Um, now, I have advocated in the past for putting all of your required needles for a project in the bag when you start. That is not always practical for some people, especially if you don't have a full set, which is fine. Put as much as you can in there. Um, I just recently started adding the Chaogu uh, interchangeable needles to my collection. I don't have a huge amount of cords, and I know for the first part of this project, um, that this is the only one that I'm going to need. So I will put that in there as well. Next, your swatch. Yes, I would say include your swatch. This is a swatch that has been washed and blocked and measured. And for the record, I did not get gauge on this, but I'm okay with it because the amount of gauge that I am off will actually give me approximately the amount of ease I really wanted. I'm kind of in between two sizes. This will put me probably right in that sweet spot, so I'm fine with it. It is, I think, important as well to make sure that we keep the swatch with us because, sorry, as I'm just reaching over, as we keep the swatch with us, 
we can refer back to it as needed. And as we have talked about in the past, adding a nice little label to it um, is a way for us to keep record of it. I have not yet written this down. I just finished the swatch. So that will go in the bag as well. And then what's a knitting project without yarn, right? So I have a couple of skeins here for this project that have not been wound up. I like to keep those in the project bag if I can. If it's big enough, I like to keep it in there. This is a project that I had previously frogged, so I have quite a few skeins that are already wound up that can pop right in there. And I have my contrasting yarn, so that goes in there next. The only thing that's missing from this is something like waste yarn or um, stitch holders for those things that require it. So I'm going to be back in just a second and I'll show you what that looks like. So in my handy dandy twig and horn accessory case, I have, ta-da, these are perfect for, um, and they're, you know, not anything new. You've seen these before, but they are perfect for just putting waste, or sorry, instead of using waste yarn, putting your stitches on hold when you need them um, and then they just stay clipped together. So that could also go in there. Should you need it, it is also slightly helpful to have a, um, a needle gauge if you need it. I don't need it for this particular project because the needles are really well marked in the Chao Gu, but if you need it, that's another sort of fun thing to add in there. So there you have it. There's everything that I need. The only thing that is missing truly from here now is the pattern. That I leave up to you, my dear knitters, and you get to decide, do you want to add your pattern digitally and have it on your iPad or on your phone? If you are a print the pattern kind of person, then that's what this, in this particular bag, that's what this nice big pocket is for. So you can print your pattern and include it in there. But as far as I'm concerned now, this project is good to go. It has everything in it. I'm not going to have to hunt for anything. You know, I might need some stitch markers down the road, but in this particular project, stitch markers are not really required. There's no patterning. There's just a lot of stockinette and a little shaping near the end. So I'm not going to worry about that. But if you need it, that is something else that you want to consider and have at it. Happy knitting. Happy organized knitting, knitters. Okay, so far be it from me to read from a teleprompter, I don't have one, or handwritten notes, I don't have those either. But I do have notes on my phone, and these are the winners for the fall finish along. Yay. Um, sorry, I just realized that I used to do that in the old school way when I was doing my void along, and I would distort the voice and go, void along. Yeah, so I'm not going to do that. So, um, winners, you will be, I'm going to give you a week to respond to this video. If I don't hear from you in the week, I will DM you directly on Instagram. One of the benefits of being on Instagram is I know who all y'all are. I wrote down all your names on Instagram, so I can tell you, um, that I will be in touch in a week, but I want to give you a little bit of element of surprise. So the winner of the Sandy by the Lakeside uh, green suede bag that I showed in the last episode is red. Okay, this is the funny thing. I don't know how to pronounce some of these because they're not really whole words, but I will put it here below. Um, red New 21 Knits is won the Sandy by the Lakeside bag. The uh, first skein of Niehaven, the yarn that I um, co created with Christina, the cozy knitter is Wool Wine Books. Um, the second winner of the yarn is Sunnyside Knitter. The third winner is Berry Fun Mom. Now, Annie Perrin is also providing some yarn as prizes. Annie's going to ship these directly to you. So at, rather than, I've shown you the other prizes in person, Annie's going to ship these directly to you. But if you want to see what they look like, I'll tell you. Uh, Danny Lake One has won this one. Uh, Lee Knits has won this one. And Miri Yummy underscore W has won this one. Congratulations. And we have two more prizes. These are patterns that I am providing. 
that will be your choice of pattern on Ravelry, or if you have an alternative place that you'd like your pattern from, that's fine. Up to $10 uh, US in value. So books, things like that aren't included, but individual pattern, no problem. Just tell me which one you'd like, and I'll make sure that happens. I'll need your email address, likely, for that. The first one is Natalok Christensen. Sorry, I'm glad it's going to be on the screen. And the second one is Tig Makes. So hopefully everybody got all of that down, um, rewind it if you didn't, if you heard your name, you'll rewind it and you'll know it's you. If you didn't hear your name, I'm sorry that you didn't win, but you know what? You finished some stuff. So that was the whole thing of it, right? Was to finish some stuff. So I'd love to hear from you about what you're knitting uh, what you're planning on knitting for the knit along, if you're going to participate, participate in the Ravelry group if that's something that you choose to do. Um, this will not be uh, hosted on Instagram even though there is a hashtag, the winners will only be from the finished object thread, just saying. Um, again, thank you for participating, thank you for being part of this community, thank you for just being wonderful and awesome people. Yes. I know a lot of you have downloaded uh, my project tracker that I provided on the Sticks Plus Twine website, and hopefully you're enjoying that. Um, there will be more stuff coming. You know, I've got plans. I've got things in the works for, for all of you. But um, if you want to be notified when new episodes come out, make sure you subscribe. Just hit the bell, and you'll be notified when new ones come out. Um, a thumbs up is always appreciated. If you want to thumbs down, I guess, okay, sure, but, you know, it doesn't really mean anything to anybody, so, okay, have at it. Um, and if you didn't enjoy yourself, that's okay, too. Totally fine. There's plenty of things on YouTube for you to watch. So, hopefully, we'll see you back next time. I've been Eric. This is Sticks Plus Twine. We'll see you in the next episode.